we do this exercise was a little wagon wheel of like, where are you with your health, your energy, your income, your family, your friends, your love? And that, that thing always looked like a jagged wheel, like lots of money, lots of this, fun's great, oh, this is not good. This is the first time ever. It's a really round wheel in my life. And right now they're all kind of hitting on all cylinders. What would your typical message be to somebody if they went through that wagon wheel exercise and they were hitting it on all cylinders? What would you tell that person? If they were hitting it on all cylinders, I'd probably say the full of shit. Um, uh, and any other time in my life I would say that, I'm but I can't. Yeah, no. Dean, thanks for making the time here. I think you're known super well for all of your mindset, habits, success, all of that. I wanted to go a little different angle with you today and talk marketing. No, let's do it. I think people don't see behind the scenes of everything that you're doing and the massive success that you've had sold over two million books and everything else you've done. What are, what are some of the high level strategies you're using right now on the marketing side to really push the needle? Yeah, you know, it's kind of like um, art and science. It's tactical and 30,000 foot. So maybe we'll start with some higher level stuff yeah. and then you drill down as far as you want to go. Yeah. I, I think one of the biggest things when it comes to selling, everybody always asks like, what's the, what, what color page are you using? What's your headline? What arrow are you using? What's the, how long are your videos or how short are your videos? And I think, I think all of those are important, but minimally compared to uh, the depth, I believe, of loving what you do so much that you feel like you're doing a disservice to the world if you don't get it in their hands. And I say that for you, like you were just sitting here earlier talking to me and talking to Joe Polish and you were saying, I get mad because yes. people, you get pissed, you were saying that about Jim Rohn. More of the world needs to know Jim Rohn. You're, you're mad that more of the world doesn't know Jim Rohn, right? I feel that way when I write a book like Millionaire Success Habits. Mm -hmm. I love that book. I know that when people read it, they're going nuts over it, it impacts their life. So using your terminology, like I get mad if I can't get it in people's hands, but the opposite side is that I feel like I'm doing them a disservice. So where some people lean away from selling, they're afraid to sell, I mean my ads are everywhere. People see them on yep. TV, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. I'm not afraid of that because I know if I get them to click and give me their credit card, I get to impact their lives. You do that, you have that same mission of getting eyeballs to what you do because you know it can impact their life. So I think the foundation of sales is don't just love what you do, obsess on, over, uh, obsess on what you do so much that you literally feel bad if you're not getting a credit card. So for me, that makes me want to do an ad lighting a book on fire or climbing a mountain or being in my cryosana or driving in my car or anything I can do to get somebody to stop and impact their lives. That, that's kind of the 30,000 foot. I think the other thing too, that I think we're in a, an age that most people don't realize. I've been in the infomercial space for 21 years and entry point is hard. Like you wanna do an infomercial 10, 15 years ago, you, you need a half a million bucks just to get started. Today, someone can film an ad on, in their car, on their phone, and have it on Facebook for $10, yep. right? So I think that the, the entry point is so much easier that I think people are so saturated with the same stuff that they're looking for, that's why you do so well. You have a unique way you present it, right? So I think we're at a place right now, I believe with the economy, the way it's, gonna, it's on its way of shifting, right? Just a normal cycle. I think with the mindset of America and the world, and there's so much crap out there, well simultaneously there's a lot of good, I think people are so hungry for authenticity, they don't even realize, realize how hungry they are for it. I think they're hungry for an imperfect video that comes from your heart, mm -hmm. rather than a perfectly scripted one on the perfect stage with the perfect lights. I think they're ready for your heart revealing things that you were once scared to admit, even the things you were once embarrassed, I think we want to know that about people so we can know if we trust and like them. So I think we're at this unique place in time where you can just be the best version of yourself and still have the opportunity to sell without feeling like a salesman. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, so for mission-driven entrepreneurs who, who then have a book or have a product, what's, what's the tactic to get it more well known? What are, the, what are the three to five things that you're doing to help sell a million books? So one is most people think, I mean, there's a lot of different ways to go about it. I'm a direct response marketer. So I spend money, if I spend a dollar in advertising, I wanna get a dollar 25 back, right? right? So that's just the, my frame of reference. There's some people like my buddy Trent Shelton has a massive following. His whole last eight years has been obsessed on getting seven million people follow him on Facebook and a million on Instagram. When he launches his book, he's got that platform, he's gonna do really well with it. That's one model. My model was a little different. I was on TV for so long that I kind of ignored uh, social media. Right? You and I talk about that. That's why you're helping me and you're so amazing at what you do. 
So me, for me to impact and make a presence, I'm a direct response marketer. So my model is running ads that go to a page that sells or collects the data and put them through a process that I'll explain to you right now. Yeah. Um, you, you want the tactical? Yeah, yeah, yeah let's go, go deep. deep. Let's okay. some value. So first off, you need a sales page. So if you're a guru or a, a, an expert or in business or in life and you want to write a book, what most people think when they write a book and it's kind of dead is, let me write a book and let me do whatever I can to get a book deal. I think book deals are dead and I think it's actually dumb in today's world. The world has changed. Why? That's why Borders is gone. That's why you know a blockbuster is gone in a, in a different way, right? It's a new medium. We have the opportunity to get our product in front of people's faces cheaper and easier with the exact demographic than ever before, right? If I look at, I sold a million books on an infomercial in 2007 to 2009. That's casting a big net. That's hoping somebody walks by a TV and happens to like what I'm saying. Right. In today's world, if you want to build a book, if you had something for pregnant moms who make 75 grand a year that like peanut butter and jelly, you could find that demographic, right? So you're able to niche down so far in today's world. So whatever your niche is, niche it down and go after that audience, which is obvious, you get that. So for me, I have a sales page. My strategy is giving a book away for free. I do pay for the book and I ask people to cover the shipping and handling. So what that does is, I have a page where it's selling nonstop, right? So it's one page that everybody can go to and 24 hours a day, seven days a week, there's an advertisement, there's a video of me offering my book, free plus shipping and handling with some bonuses. That makes sense, that's obvious. So then my whole world is the art and science of getting people to that page. You get eyeballs through kind of organic growth. Mine is I'm paying what I can afford per click to get someone to go to that page. So that's YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. And the art side, for me, so again, I'm kind of going 30,000 foot and tactical all in a, I've never really shared this uh, publicly, so this is great. So if I'm not perfect at sharing it, it's the first time. But for me, it's the art and science. And how I figure out the art is I've read probably 20,000 comments from people that are following me. And I want to know what they worry about, what keeps them up at night, what their dreams are, what their goals are. And I want to match that. I combine matching that with trying to be the most authentic version of myself. Literally before I film ads, I'm like, stop with the hype, stop what you're thinking about right now, and how do you live inside their fear? Mm -hmm. How do you live inside what they're worried about? And I've been in business for over 30 years. I did live in a trailer park as a kid. I didn't go to college, so we all have our journey, but I know what it feels like on every level, so I try to put myself in different circumstances. I put myself in the beginning entrepreneur, you know, maybe someone just got out of college and they don't know what to do with their life. I, wanna, I want that person to know they're understood but I also know what it's like to, for baby boomers who've been in a job for 30 years and they feel like they wasted 30 years. I wanna live in their mind. So every time I do a video, I'm trying to live in the mind of the different people that could potentially watch. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when people ask me long video or short video, I'll tell you it doesn't matter. My two best sales videos that I've ever done, two best ads, one is 58 seconds, and that's probably sold 50,000 books, and one is 36 minutes. So. Length has nothing to do with it, impact does. Feeling connected does. Having the ability to watch a video from beginning to end. So I have this main page that I drive everybody to. It doesn't matter if I'm on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, if I do a podcast with somebody great like Ed Milet or Andy Frisella or do a, a video with Tony, I do something with you, I'm gonna drive everybody to this one place because that sales mechanism just works 24 hours, seven days a week. So they go to that page and that's where people need to obsess on conversions. If somebody goes there, does 1% of the people buy the book or 10%? And you just wanna to obsess to get that to the highest percentage possible. When that's set, then your whole job is just driving eyeballs. And when someone buys a free book for me, what I hope is I deliver so much value that I lose money when I give a book away for free. People right. don't realize that. But when people get to know me, and, and I'm not saying that uh, in a bragging way, but my, as Tony said, it, your depth, you have the depth and breadth. I've been in business for 30 years. I've been up and down. I've generated over a billion dollars with my brands and my company. When people get to hear me or they get to read, they know that I have what it takes to help them. So because of that, I can lose money on that book, but I know they like what I have that they buy all my other products. And at the end of the day, at the end of 90 days, even though I lost money giving away my book, and we're, over, we're almost at 500,000 copies, at the end of 90 days, they're like, this guy's a badass, I'm getting this, I'm getting this course, I'm gonna go to his mastermind, I'm gonna get this training, and all of a sudden that buyer that was in the negative is valuable to me and they stay with us for life. 
Right. I don't know if I explained no, that in a great. way that. So that, what's the process after? So I get my book. I paid the shipping, five bucks, six bucks, eight bucks, ten yeah. bucks, whatever it is. Now I'm on your list. Yep. What What's going to happen next? So for our list, if someone's already on it, you know, we about ninety percent of what we do is deliver value on a weekly basis. I send out a video. It's called Weekly Wisdom. I've been sending those out for this is our tenth year. So they get value every single week to build reciprocity, and then probably once a quarter, sometimes once every six months, I'll have an offer or an opportunity. Right now, uh, Tony Robbins and I are working on a new course. Mm -hmm. Totally stoked about that. My list will get nothing but love for the next couple months until I launch that course with Tony, and they'll be like, hey, gave you lots of love, built relationship. You ready for something? This is next level. And the list, I say list, but I like calling them my family. They realize that I look after them. It's not offer after offer after offer until they opt out. Right, that's some people's model. It's like squeeze them until they go. Right. I'd rather love them until I'm ready to offer them something, and that's proven really good for us. When we launch a product, we we've done tens of millions of dollars in launches after the initial purchase because we delivered value even above, uh, over and above the book. So you're going to send a weekly video. We do. We send a weekly video to forever. And this is this is stuff you record every week, or you every batch week. them? No, I, I record it every single week. Fresh every week. Every week I record. And you're thinking of your audience, and then you. Pull exactly, and what and I'll usually do, honestly, yeah. literally before I'll do a video, I'll go on DMs or, mm. or I'll go on messages and I'll read 50 of them and I'll, I'll hear, man, my mom says I'm crazy, my dad thinks I'm nuts, my, and I'll be like, oh my God, these people are letting the wrong people guide them. All right, turn on the camera. And I'll be like, hey, bad advice is the most costly advice in the world, and I'll talk about advice for 10 minutes, right? So it usually comes from their comments and what they're looking for. As Simple as that sounds, uh, I don't think there could be anything better than answering what they need, right? It's great. It gets you in the mindset yeah, yeah. of what they're thinking. Do you then use that time since you're already set up and you're feeling the vibe to then record more, more content, more videos for other purposes? Or it's just a lot of, you know what I used to do before life got so easy with iPhones and I got a little setup in my car or wherever I go is I used to go in the studio and I'd film once a week and I'd film a whole bunch of content. Now a lot of times if I'm feeling it, I'll literally pull over on the side of the road and film it or I'll film it at an event like this. So mm -hmm. um, it's more spontaneous now than ever and I think it's more authentic now than ever because it's not sit down in the studio, I'm ready to go. It's like, no, I'm having an emotion right now and I wanna share that emotion. And I'll be honest with you, as much as I think I'm transparent in my marketing and sales, I, I've dedicated 2019 to go to another level of authenticity. Hmm. Like I want people, especially it's why I wanna work with you, you're so great at that, is I want people to know the real me even more. And I think we're at a place that that's what people want. So what's and missing from it. what you're doing that will transmit that better? Um, a lot, when the camera goes on, I always feel obligated to teach. Hmm. I always feel obligated to deliver a massive message. And I think that's why our following, I think, I think we have 300,000 new Instagram followers organically just this year because we said we were there and I do a video every day, right? Um, so I want to put the effort in YouTube as well. Um, but I'm always in that mode of trying to teach and deliver. And the biggest comment we get are, Dean, we just want to see your life. We just want to know more about you. Like when the camera's off and you're not sharing something, you know, what does this look like? What, is that, what kind of father are you? What does it look like at baseball practice? So I've been saying it forever, but this is the year I'm committing to exposing that to the level they want to see. I, I'm, I don't want to do it in an egoic way, like look at my life, but it seems to be our number one thing. So what would a message, I mean, we're here, we're doing an interview, we've got a room of people. What would a version of that look like? Like pretend there's no cameras on and we're just having a conversation. You don't have to teach. What? What would you want to you share? Know, things like, things like parenting moments. When you make a decision as a parent and you go in the other room and go, man, I, I blew that. And it feels horrible and it's horrific. It's not that not so many people watching aren't parents, but there's a million of those moments that suck. And I want people to see that I, I go outside and take a walk and I'm mad at myself and I contemplate why I did it. Mm. And I call a friend who I think is a great parent. I'll call my buddy Ethan who happens to be here right now or I'll call somebody I, I admire in that space and say, I handled this wrong, what do you think? And that suffering, that pain and then fix it and then going in and fixing it. Or and that could be with a business partner, right? You, you got a business partner and you, you ask for too much or you didn't do enough in the partnership. or you did, like, I think the biggest benefit of seeing aspirational videos online is to see that you can. But I think there's a bigger byproduct of that that most people don't recognize, is I think when some people see the, the wealth and the private jets and the Lamborghinis and the happy lives and the six pack and the pretty girl or the handsome guy, there's a percentage of the population, I bet you half, that don't get encouraged, they get discouraged. They, they look and go, I could never look that good. I could never have that money. I could never live that life. They don't have the problems I do. They don't have the fights I do. They don't make bad parenting decisions. They don't hurt their partners like I did. And I think the world needs to know that that 
It happens to all of us at every single level. If we're millionaires, billionaires, if we're the Pope, we do that stuff. And I think people need it just so they go, holy wait, wait, I can get there and I could, Dean screws up all the time. Like, I want people to see, so many people are like, Dean, you got it all together. And I'm always like, no, I don't. I want people to see more of what I don't have together. So, so today, how have you screwed up? Today? <laughs> today, how I screwed let's, up. Let's I, show it, let's yeah, show the side. Yeah, um, yesterday I have a business partner I'm doing business with, um, and I was in a hurry and I left a message Little, this is tiny, this is nothing. There's much bigger things than this. Yeah. But I'll tell you yesterday, right before I got here, I was in a hurry and I left a message and I hit send and I said, wow, I made that whole entire message about me and the way I approached it in my head, I felt like I was being selfish. And I try to analyze those thoughts and things I do. And I have to be honest, I didn't get a reply back till after lunch and it bugged me for the first four hours I was sitting here yesterday. I'm like, man, that was, that was all about me. This is a good dude. I, I sh and I, I contemplate and I thought, and then I, but what I did is I went through a process of how I would never do it again, how I learned from it. And then I sent a text. I said, right before I even got a reply, I sent the text. I said, man, I hope my enthusiasm didn't come off wrong. I made that entire conversation about me. You know, I like building reciprocity. And, and I just said a little something and I got back this four minute amazing message. I went in a better mood at one o'clock. It's like, dude, you're the most giving human being in the world, but no one would know that I sat in a, in a group of amazing people for four hours and every 15 minutes, I'm like, damn, why'd I send that? Why'd I send that, right? That's little, that's tiny. But it's also the same things that people contemplate when they go in for a, in a job that they don't really like and they said the wrong thing to their boss or they're uncomfortable around a coworker. Like all these things match. And I want people to see that we can be imperfect in so many ways and still reach heights of success we never imagined, right? I mean, I suck at a lot of things, but I'm really good at a few. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we can help people with that. So in talking to you, you know, before all this, you've now, seems like made a decision to blow up even more and yeah. now build the brand and move from just direct marketing to actually brand building. Yep. What has to change in the Dean Grad COC mindset or skill set to make that happen? Um, really good question. Is I'm a really private person, and uh, Jeremy, who works with me, has been trying for three years to get more of that video, get somebody to spend more time with me and do that. It's, it's that. Like, I just, I want to be transparent and open, and I don't mind sharing it. I just have to, I have to surround myself and schedule more video time where people catch that side of me the more real side of me. I shouldn't say the more real. I, I speak from the heart. I'm always saying the same, but again, I'm always in teach mode. I think it's time for people to see the other side. You know, the, th the sides that you struggle on to get there. So I, I think it's just committing. I think it's just committing to it. How much of it is not wanting to show your wife or your kids or private life, like other people versus just showing you what you're doing? So you want the most transparent thing I've ever shared on video? Because I course. can tell you, you're just going that direction. Let's so do it. I might as well share it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't show a lot of that for years because I, was, I knew I was going through a divorce for the last five, seven years. My ex is a great lady. We're dear friends. She's a dear friend of mine. Not just like, oh, kind of friend. Like, we talk every day. We co-parent amazing. But we both knew our relationship was ending. We were both scared to death about our kids. Both of us come from divorce. So both of us didn't want to do that to our kids. And uh, I didn't share my personal life because of that, because I knew it was gonna end, and I didn't want to be a hypocrite. Hmm. And I never talked about relationships on camera. I never gave advice about love, because I felt like I was a failure, really bad in that part. And uh, it's been a couple of years, my divorce is final, I'm in the best relationship of my life. My ex is in a great relationship, our kids are thriving, we get along. My ex and my girlfriend, soon to be uh, I'm betting wife in the, within this year, um, went to dinner twice last week and they're friends and they talk every day. Like, I'm in a place right now where I'm ready to show the world my private life, my girlfriend, my kids, my house. And, but I kept that so quiet for so long because it was kind of like a, it was kind of a, an inner thing that bugged me because I knew that part wasn't right. People talk a lot about authenticity and you've brought it up a lot. And I think the actual answer is to sh share the thing that you're most afraid of sharing. Yeah. Because people don't want to learn from the perfect person. Absolutely. Knowing that you're struggling with this thing. So what's the next thing you're struggling with? That if it happens, maybe not relationship because it's great, yeah. but something else that's coming up that maybe you're struggling with right now to say, hey, Dean right now isn't perfect. And you're struggling with these things and showing us the journey behind the curtains that yeah. you don't have the answers yet because now your life is great at the home side, but 
Yeah, so I, I would say at any other time, I'd have, uh, things are really, I get, more than ever in my life, every area of my life, this is the first time we're in a, a high-level mastermind that Joe and I originally created uh, two and a half, three years ago. And we do this exercise, was a little wagon wheel of like, where are you with your health, your energy, your income, your family, your friends, your love? And that, that thing always looked like a jagged wheel, like lots of money, lots of this, fun's great, Oh, this is not good. This is the first time ever. It's a really round wheel in my life. My businesses are going great. I, like I said, I'm, 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 uh, my partners, I have several different partners in different areas. I love all of them. They're dear friends. They're, they have the same mission to make an impact on the world. So the only thing I'm struggling with right now is opportunity overload. I have, I have a core business that, uh, that is made up of multiple businesses. I have 13 different companies, um, and they're rock solid. But I know this is like every entrepreneurial's journey. Most of us have a level and then we go through chaos and then there's another level and chaos and another level. This is kind of the chaos, but happy chaos as I go to the next level. So what I'm struggling with the most is just time. I still pick up my kids from school three or four days a week and I, nothing, I left here, I was here yesterday at this event, I had left because it was my turn to pick up the kids, nothing. I don't compromise that for anything or anybody. There's nobody that could take me away from that. Um, that's what success means to me. I still coach Little League, I coach softball, I coach flag football. So I wanna be wealthy there mm. in time and connection with my kids. That's, that's my number one uh, determining factor of wealth in my life is am I connected to my kids? Am I connected to my girlfriend? Um, nothing else is really more important than that. Secondly is my partners and my connection with them. And third is the impact of the world. And right now they're all kind of hitting on all cylinders except for the overwhelm of so many great opportunities coming. So right now it's the scramble, uh, depending on when you see this video, but it'll be out or maybe not yet, but Tony and uh, Robbins and I are launching a course and getting all the pieces together for, it's something that we think is gonna impact the world for the next 40 years. So it's not like this little, oh, we're throwing something out there. It's like, this is Tony and I's legacy in this niche of the world. So it's a stressor because I, I wanna make sure it's right. I wanna over deliver to the world. What would your typical message be to somebody if they went through that wagon wheel exercise and they were hitting it on all cylinders? What would you tell that person? If they were hitting it on all cylinders, I'd probably say the foolish. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, and any other time in my life, I would say that. Are but you I, foolish yeah, no, I, it, I, I feel blessed. But I would. Or, or another but, version of it: Are you inside your comfort zone? No, hell no. I push myself outside the comfort zone all the time, um, in every area. But you have to understand: I just got out of a wake of one of the worst periods of my life personally. Right. Going through that divorce, nothing has affected me like that. I mean, transparency, I never, when people said they had anxiety or an anxiety attack, I used to think that meant oh, I had anxiety, I was anxious. But leaving my kids and only seeing them half a week, you know, half of the week when I used to make them breakfast every day and Sunday was my family meeting days, uh, I went into straight anxiety attacks for about six months. I couldn't sleep at night, I was popping Xanax once a week, I was drinking wine three days a week. And, and flying all over the world, meeting with Tony Robbins and Dr. Amen and the best specialists on the planet. I thought I was losing my mind. Um, so I just came out of that, uh, not just, but in the last year. Um, but I worked myself, in fact, I went through it today, but I worked through a process. Like I just used all the personal growth. Literally, I, I'm not just saying what, you know, it's like Joe used a great line of eat your own dog food. Mm -hmm. Like I literally went through the process that I teach. I literally went through, hey, I, I'm painting a really bad picture. I'm stacking all the negative. Let me stack the positive. Who do I not want to be to my kids? Who do I want to be to my kids? What's my compelling future? Who can I gain knowledge from? Can I watch these videos, read this book, go see some friends? And then how do I put that in play? And literally, like such proof of concept, it's what's taken my passion to another level of wanting to help people. It's why I want to work with you. It's why I want to get more exposure is because going through that process, I realize how damn lucky I am because I have amazing friends, because I've been in personal growth for 20 years. I have all these at my fingertips. Money's not a problem. I have all this and I still went through six months of hell. Mm -hmm. And when I got through the other side, one day the hell ended. Like literally one day it was like, whoop, life went to another level immediately. Like a thousand pounds got let out. Um, childhood worries and things that affected my childhood went away. I attracted the best love in my life. My business has literally almost tripled since my divorce was final, literally, because I'm free. Mm. I, don't, I don't wake up every morning. I woke up for five years every morning of my life and I'd say, am I gonna leave this week? Literally, and this is someone who works on his personal growth every day, but I'd see my kids and go, I can't leave. So when I say I'm hitting on all cylinders, it's because I just went through that. Six months from now, a year from now, might be the next struggle, but right now I feel like 
uh, you know, in heaven. So the only reason I'm sharing that is because I have all these assets at my fingertips and I thought I was losing it. I'm not mm. kidding you, I said, I made it till this age and I cracked. Like I crushed it till now and now I cracked. And then I'm like, what if I feel this way forever? So when I got around the other side of that, and I'm on a whole other level, I said, what about most people that don't have access to be friends with Tony Robbins and Dr. Amen and Joe Polish and Ethan Willis and Brendan Burchard and all these guys that came around and just, uh, you know, helped with the process. I, I hired two different consultants. I've been working in personal growth for 20 years. Most people don't have access to any of that. Mm -hmm. So they just live in that misery thinking that's the rest of their life. And if you try to talk about something that gives you passion and drive to push people and help people, that's why I'm pushing my book. I mean. You know, we're at 470,000 copies of my new book. I need that to get to a million. I'm writing my next book. I'm creating the best courses in my life. It's why I, we, Tony and I partner together. It's like, it's about impacting, giving people options. Because most people watching this right now, even Evan, they'll watch it and maybe they'll be inspired. Maybe they'll find one thing. But when they shut that video off, a lot of them go back and go, but you don't know what I'm dealing with. And they go right back to where they were. Right. How do we do things that it's so impactful and so obvious that they take nuggets every time they watch and they actually put it in their life, right? Not just, because inspiration's great, but how long does inspiration last, right? They watch a video, you feel great. It's like, you go, you go to an event and for three days you feel amazing, fourth day it fades, two weeks later you're right back where you were. So what I love about what you do, and I mean this, uh, our team watches your videos all the time, is it's consistent and ongoing and never stop. It's what people need every day. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't know about you, I, I would bet to say, it's like most people think they can, it's like going to the gym for the weekend and work out like crazy and they're gonna be in shape forever. Personal development, personal growth is the same thing. I need it, I don't know about you, I need it every day, mm -hmm. every day. I can't go a day without listening to a book, watching an audio or talk to somebody or, sh or even sharing it to somebody else as I'm sharing it, I'm learning. Right, I need it every day. So what you do is amazing and that's, you know, I'm in the same space. I just want to give people the tools. There's a great interview clip of uh, Elon Musk going on CNBC and he says the world's gonna end because the AI and the robots are gonna kill us. And then some reporters ask him, well, how is it gonna happen? And he says, I don't know. And he asked a, they ask a bunch of follow-up questions and he, he says, I don't know. And I watched that clip and I, I think to myself, I don't know that I would have the courage to say I don't know on national TV to a bold claim that I just made. Yeah. And I look at that and I think, you know, the next time I get asked a question that I don't know the answer to, I hope I have the courage to say I don't say, know, I don't know yeah. no matter who's watching. Yeah. So why I'm asking that is you are going down this path of authenticity, which is the next evolution of your brand. The next time something like that happens where you feel like your life might be falling or cracking and you're the guy who's supposed to have it all figured out, you think you have the courage to say? Yeah. Hands down, because yeah. I can't help people if I don't share. And that's what I learned through, because I kept it quiet. I did. I thought people needed me stronger. And when you say, everything leads you to, you, the reason you do what you do is, I don't know 100% of your journey, but all those things led you to have this passion. Mm -hmm. My passion of being authentic is not because I want to sell more books, it's because I can help more people. Because I suffered alone. A handful of my friends knew, the rest of the world didn't. I still got on video like, hey everybody, what's up, what's up, Dean Graziosi, and then I go home and pound a glass of wine and hope mm. to fall asleep because I didn't sleep for two nights before that. I'll never do that again. I'll never, I'll never not let the world see that. Cool, man. Well, thank you for the time today. That thank was you for awesome. sharing your story. You're awesome, keep up the good I'm work, man. I'm super pumped to see where you take everything. Yeah, man. you got it, bro. Cool. First off, thanks to Believe Nation for doing such an amazing job. If you wanna watch more of my videos, look at the link in the description and go to my YouTube channel. If you want more Dean Graziosi, check out the top 10 rules video made on him. The link is right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. Most of the time, our next level of life lives on the other side of our biggest obstacle. I wanted to be successful because I hated not being in control of my life as a kid.